Well, good morning to our LinkedIn network. Well, with today's special guest and much dear friend, Rusty Burroughs, CEO of New Line Utility Services, I have to tell you, I'm suddenly craving a little bit of gumbo, some crawfish, maybe a little etouffee, and some smooth jazz music. Can you all guess where our special guest comes from? James, my partner in crime as always, I'm gonna give you first guess. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for, for the handoff. It sounds like to me this, this episode might have a little bit of Cajun flair. Uh, Rusty, welcome and good morning. Very glad to have you with us today. How are good you? Good morning, doing? thank you guys for having me. You bet, how are you doing during these crazy quarantine times? Man, we're doing good. We're doing very good. Um, you know, first, let me say this. You know, you guys are officially invited to NOLA, as we refer to it, for some gumbo, fresh seafood, great music, as soon as it's safe to do so. Yeah. And, yes, Cajun people, Amen. South Louisiana people, are very resilient. We're used to overcoming great odds. Um, but we are staying safe, observing all the health protocols, really doing well there. But I will say this, we're still working some pretty long hours because, you know, we're obviously considered one of the essential businesses doing infrastructure work. And uh, it really has not slowed our production very much. We can talk more about that later. But uh, for the most part, we're, we're kind of at full capacity and uh, just cranking it out, doing, doing well, though. But everybody's staying healthy, kids, grandkids, everybody's doing well. That's awesome. Jimmy, I didn't know if you noticed, but... Uh... Today my coffee's in a travel mug. I see that. And, that, and I'm and I'm in a different location. You don't see the uh, the arcade games behind me today. I actually traveled to the office in Decatur, Texas today, and uh, I actually see a few people. It's very strange but very satisfying. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I know people are thinking, you know, where's the Galaga game behind him or. Or, uh, you know, he's usually just back there playing golden tea. But uh, no, I'm in the office today. So slowly, I love it. Slowly transitioning back. We're excited. Uh, we're excited to uh, eventually quit talking about COVID-19, maybe. But, uh, uh, amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I tell you, you know, we touched on the, it's the uh, it's the cabin fever. It's uh, it's the, the mental fatigue. But you know what? Every day we're getting closer and closer. We're keeping strong. And I have a commitment to you two gentlemen that as soon as this blows over, we're going to go grab ourselves a little lunch in NOLA. We'll go to Muriel's in Jackson Square and, uh, you know, kind of decompress. But as we get started today, I want to do a real quick intro on Rusty. Rusty, again, is current CEO of New Line Utility Services out of Louisiana. Uh, Rusty is also past VP at Entergy Energy. Uh, he sits on the LGA, Louisiana Gas Association Board of Directors, and he is a LSU Go Tigers graduate. Rusty, did I miss any highlights? Please, if I did, fill us in. No, no, you handled it well. I'll give one little shout out, <clears throat> uh, not only LSU, but uh, my, my Tulane MBA uh, graduate friends and buddies because uh, – that was a great group, and uh, I do want to give them a little shout out. Um, really, really great group of guys. And I will say this: Muriel's is an excellent choice. Did you know that Muriel's is haunted? Yeah. Well, Rusty, when we had lunch there last time, you were filling me in. I don't know if you remember that. It's a couple of years back, but yeah. Yes. Very cool. Yes, they have a séance room. I, they actually call it the pillow room. And the best way to do murals is to, to go to that room for, for a little short period of time, spend some time there and listen for, you know, other world stuff and, uh, and then go enjoy a nice meal like crawfish and goat cheese crepes, which are fantastic. Ooh. All right. Well, Rusty, tell us, tell us why you're here today. Well, um, a couple of things. One, one I think we, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Gas Tech, which is the Gas Training and Education Center um, in Louisiana. And um, it, it's actually uh, LGA, Louisiana Gas Association, vision for many years. And the folks there have, um, have really, um, you know, not just envisioned it, but there were several efforts to try to get it going. And in, in a recent couple of years, um, they were able to partner 
with the Joint Emergency Services Training Center, commonly called JESTEC, in Louisiana, and that's managed and run by the state police. And what they do there is they do, well, they do all kinds of training, obviously, um, law enforcement training, first responders, you know, fire folks from all over the state come, uh, EMS folks, obviously, any law enforcement. And, uh, and so they have classrooms. It's a really fine facility. They have classrooms, a cafeteria, a hotel facility on site. Mm -hmm. And so because they do first responding uh, tasks and actions in the gas industry with us, we see them out there often, right? If there's a fire, fire department, we got to get the gas cut off. Same way hazmat for state police and that kind of thing. So it just seemed to be a potential good partnership. So over a couple of year period, we were able to work out where they actually, Just Tech, has donated land to LGA, oh. um, quite a few, like 20, 25 acres at least, and there's really even more space out there than that. Um, some buildings that they donated to us, um, and of course labor, some of their own labor from their folks that work out there, and the use of their classroom facilities. And, you know, it, it's all designed to support gas worker and first responder education and training, right? Because sometimes we do have a common need. And it's what's unique about this, at least in, in, in my opinion, in the industry is there are a lot of great training centers out there. You know, I know Atmos in Dallas and uh, Entergy has one in New Orleans and, and there's, they're all over the place. Um, but this one is, is designed to serve not just a single utility, but everyone in the state of Louisiana, right? That has anything to do with the gas industry. And, and the other thing that's a little different is we, we didn't you know, go out and try to raise funds and that kind of thing, you know, because these, these facilities can cost millions of dollars, um, especially some of them that are, that are really, really nice facilities. Um, but we're relying on the goodwill of industry partners, some grants, and a lot of sweat equity. Yeah. And uh, we, we have had just a lot of donations of materials and in sweat equi equity from the Jestec folks, from all the gas utilities in the state, even the mun municipalities, LGA members, vendors, contractors. I mean, everybody has pitched in. And we probably, so far, in donations and grants, we're probably at about 400,000. Um, wow. So yeah, we have a really good start on it. We, in phase one was, was our classroom build out, right? And the building that they donated to us, it, it basically needed to be totally refurbished and they provided the labor and then the material we got through some of the grants that we were able to get. So um, yeah, it, wor it worked out great. That's complete. We have the entire gas system, PE and steel, installed just like a gas city that you guys have seen around the country. Um, and of course, that includes, you know, houses. We've put a bunch of uh, 11 or 12 like leak lines out there for that type of training, locating, finding uh, leaks, troubleshooting. Um, we have houses with meters and appliances. We have a regulator station we can do training on. We have uh, gas fire training pits, which is really, really uh, interesting when, when that training is conducted. We have CP points and, of course, you know, many, many props that we use. So what we've done to this point is, you know, we have um, we've conducted several uh, what we call intensive weeks of training last year. And by the way, we actually opened the facility in March of last year. And uh, and so we've conducted, you know, several uh, intensive weeks of training, and that actually included both the JESTEC folks, first responders, and the gas folks. And we had some really, really um, a great turnout. And um, so we're, we're, we're kind of off on our way, I believe. And, and a couple of things, one of the things that, that gas tech were trying to accomplish, you know, there's, there's OQ, right? And, and OQ is designed to make sure Everyone can safely perform a task on a pipeline, right? Whatever that task is, primarily. Gas tech, what we're doing is trying to take it to a little bit different level, incorporating a lot of hands-on training. And so what we're trying to do is really 
increase the skills and competency and knowledge of folks, right? Because OQ is just kind of getting you started. And then, so we're trying to piggyback off of that, you know, and, and so one of the things that you guys, or you guys do every day in your life, one of the things that we're working on right now is identifying and developing, <clears throat> excuse me, standardized training curriculum. Because even though we have done training at LGA for quite a few years, but it's, it's just been, you know, uh, mostly like vendor facilitators and folks that are kind of SMEs in the industry come mm-hmm. in and do the training, but it, but it hasn't been as consistent as we would like. So that's what we're trying to accomplish is get some standardized curriculum so that we have consistent training regardless of who comes for the training, right? Who needs it and, and, and who engages in the training. And then we have, um, so that's kind of where we are with phase one right now. Um, phase two, if not for COVID-19, would have started probably towards the very beginning of the year. Um, we, were, we were preparing to do that. We have a, um, we have a, a, a group, SJB group, that LGA has hired to manage a facility, and Robert Bourne's going to have the uh, predominant responsibility for that, and he, Robert's a 35-year gas guy, so he's a great fit. Um, so we would have started a little early. We were pre- preparing to, but now we're kind of, you know, on hold, obviously, until we kind of get past this, uh, this little COVID thing. Um, and so phase two, what we'll do is we'll start incorporating identifying needs for transmission folks, because so far, it's been primarily distribution that we focused on. So we'll begin to secure funding and donations and grants, that kind of thing, and hopefully begin construction. You know, my hope would be that middle or end of the summer, we can actually begin doing that, that phase of it. And uh, some of just some of the things in, in the uh, distribution arena that we train on, um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, we do leak training, uh, CP training, regulator station, kind of gas 101, 102. So there's a, there's a lot of things that we do um, on the distribution side. Some of the things that we'll continue to build on there would be damage prevention. Um, our idea is to put more uh, different kinds of pipe actually in the ground, have people locate them, you know, the whole, go through the whole damage prevention process um, creating a CP system, a full with rectifiers and everything, uh, tapping and stopping, uh, horizontal directional drilling. That's one that a lot of folks would like to see a, a good training site in the state for that. Um, you know, and just meter installation, measurement regulation, those kind of things. You know, Rusty, you know, Gas Tech is so impressive. And, and you know, I've been filling James in on it for quite some time. Um, I really encourage folks to go to the LGA site and to really, you know, deep, uh, dig a little bit deeper into it. Um, but, you know, you do have a very small role, quote unquote, as CEO of a company, New Line Construct, excuse me, New Line Utility Services. And, um, you know, in a few minutes we have remaining, can you, can you clue us in a little bit on New Line, give us a little education on that and some of the things that, uh, that COVID's been impacting you on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned to you guys a little bit before we started, you know, we're we're still in in uh, full capacity mode and in in, uh, in our work just because of the infrastructure nature of it. Um, one of the things we've had to do is is just, I guess, rethink and adjust the way we do business. And I, I know that's that sounds pretty obvious in this whole COVID environment. We've heard um, it a few times, Rusty, from guests we've had over the last few weeks. I think everybody's rethinking how they're doing business. Yes, ab- absolutely, absolutely. Um, so one of the things that uh, I think most utilities, you know, have done, at least in Louisiana, um, suspended meter and relight functions and tasks, right? So that we're not entering customer homes. I mean, obviously that makes sense. So what we're doing is instead of, you know, doing the complete process of laying main, laying services, you know, installing those, and then coming and setting meters and relighting pl- appliances inside the customer home, we, we've stopped the meter and the relight process for now. So, and, and obviously, you know, so now you just have a riser there 
So we'll come back at some point and we'll have to catch all these up, right? Um, so that's one of the things. Um, field operational challenges, and, and I guess I'll call it risk mitigation. You know, we, we do have an obligation. We have to pre protect our employees, our partners that we work with, meaning any vendors, you know, our customers, uh, the utility guys we work with, the public. So, you know, we've really been uh, really doing a great job of social distancing, sanitizing. I mean, our guys in the field understand right. it. They understand how important it is. And so it's really worked well. We've, you know, knock on wood, we've gotten no one yet that has actually contracted COVID in our organization. And really, I don't, to my knowledge, anyone that we really associate with. So good. that tells me we're doing a pretty good job with that. Um, one of the things that is, is very different too, we call it ghost town streets. And so as we're going about working, um, and I'll just use New Orleans, but it's every place we work, but I'll use New Orleans as an example. We have crews working there and our guys, you know, initially, you know, their, their thought was, well, man, everybody's going to be home now may make it a little more challenging because you're going to have people all walking around and, but man, I'm telling you, stay at home in New Orleans literally meant stay in your home. Yep. When I'm on a job site, I have a hard time even seeing anyone, any kind of resident anywhere. Seriously. I mean, it is like a ghost town. And so what that's meant is minimal traffic, residents not walking around, um, and really has resulted in a little bit smoother operation. I, I, I will tell you, I think my, my personal opinion, our production has actually improved somewhat because of that, right? So th those are those are some of the things. And I think, you know, when we look to the future, and, and obviously myself nor anyone can really predict, you know, I mean, we may get a vaccine at some point and it's not that much of a worry anymore. We don't really know, but I think what we're doing, we're kind of preparing as if, you know, we'll have some level of what we're doing now. Um, so we'll, we'll, we're going to try to make sure we keep that culture of, social distancing, sanitizing. Let's just make sure we keep doing that yep. until we're certain, we're absolutely certain we're, we're good to do otherwise. And you know, one of the things that we do as a business, and I, I know most businesses do, and, and I know I come from a utility background, and it's something we do well there, contingency planning as a business, the whole business continuity thought process, right? And, and one of the things that we have always done is plan for the worst and hope for the best. And we always think of it as what is the absolute worst thing that could happen in our business or any business, right? And you need to think of it that way and plan as if that's going to happen so that you're prepared when it does and hopefully it won't. So I think that's, that's the, the mantra we're going to try to keep, you know, so that it keeps us on our toes and keeps us well planned. Rusty, I, I think that's a good place to stop. Normally we ask, we ask for any final words, but I think you knocked it out of the park right there. Absolutely. I think, okay. I think uh, we're, we're all working our plan for the worst right now and, and uh, hoping for the best here. And, and Rusty, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, I, I know, you know, from a gas tech standpoint, you know, we're somebody who believes OQ is the standard, but we expect people to raise the bar, and it sounds like what's going on at Gas Tech is very much that. Uh, we, we, we appreciate your work there and the, and the team involved in that, and we look forward to uh, visiting that location and, and hopefully being part of that. Uh, Jimmy, always nice to see you, brother. Whatever beach you join us from, and whatever given day, it's always a pleasure. Um, as always, yeah, guys, I appreciate you so much. As always, if, if someone you know or, or, or you would like to join us on Coffee with Jim and James, we'd love to have you. Uh, we ask you to reach out to us. Also, be sure to connect with uh, Rusty. You'll never find him on LinkedIn uh, because he does. it's not Rusty. So, <laughs> Jim, it's William. Yes, William. It's William. William, William Burroughs, right? So we'll, we'll tag him in there. Just connect right above. Um, connect with all three of us. Reach out if you have any questions about Gas Tech, about New Line, about EWN. We'll be happy to make the connection for you. As always, hope everyone has a blessed day.
Uh, we are blessed in this industry. God bless everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys too. I really appreciate, appreciate the invite and you guys stay safe as well. You too, Rusty. Look forward to seeing you soon. Okay guys. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.